The best uh, part about playing the drums is my hair. You see my hair? It's ideal for drumming because I can just go into my own world. Goodbye. And then I just boom, boom. boom. My passions have always been the same since childhood. I've always loved music and I've always loved feminism. The way I like to create my music is by usually waiting to the point of inspiration where I'll for some reason sing into my uh, cell phone or record it because the idea just comes right into my head. And I could be anywhere, in my car, Oftentimes when I'm traveling, literally I've written a song waiting for the conveyor belt of my luggage because Delta just took forever to spit out all my baggage from the flight. I'll save all of those ideas and then revisit them when I'm actually booking studio time with my co-collaborator Alexia. And then from there she'll come in and add in the sound design. She's really gifted with electronics and using Ableton. And then I will add in my drums and vocals. Take me This is the first kit that I got when I was a uh, seventh grader. It's um, a Mapex black kit, and I've actually played it since seventh grade. So I was 12, and I'm 27 now. It's a pretty long time. I think the best drummers are able to make anything sound good, you know, whether it's uh, an old drum set or pots and pans. And so I've always channeled that, and usually most people upgrade their drum set every five or 10 years, but I kept it because it worked. You know, it did the job and it sounded great. Very few women play the drums. By the nature of them, they're geared towards boys. The advertising is almost entirely always men. The sort of priority on being big and muscly and having like a thousand symbols, you know, is very male energy. So for the longest time, I would say that was the first way that I infused my feminism into my music by what I call being the change. You know, my last name is Gandhi, that was his famous quote. You must be the change you want to see in the world. The subtlety of sending a signal to an audience of, look, I'm super talented at what I do and I'm on a world-class stage playing in Japan, playing in the UK, playing in Poland, wherever. Anyone can do what they want to do. And now the second way that I do it is in my music with very literal lyrics. We have one electro, electronic music song, kind of a trap beat, it's called The Future Is Female. And the lyrics are a direct commentary on the problems that I see today, you know? Fictitious depictions of, wom of women must die out if we want to live in a world that triumphs. I am just talking about loving the femme. I ain't talking about nobody else. I ain't talking about nobody else. Toxic masculinity has to end. I'm just talking about loving ourselves. You can catch me singing these words in a I really do love clothing that takes risk, t clothing that is unique, clothing that I've never seen before, clothing that's one of a kind, and definitely clothing that's made by women. This piece right here was from Argentina, um, a badass female-owned uh, fashion collective that I found. This piece is kind of cool. When I was on the road with MIA, a lot of fans would always give us gifts at the end of the tour or leave gifts for us in the dressing room. And so when we were playing Chile, um, a, lo a local fashion designer, this young girl, uh, had made this and left it for us and Maya gave it to me. This one right here, my grandmother brought for me for, uh, <laughs> for Christmas, definitely intended to be worn as pajamas, but I don't think I've ever worn them once as pajamas. They've definitely been full on outfits, either on a plane or if I'm playing music or just clothing that's comfortable. I think one of the best compliments that I got on a show that I did this month was that never have they seen a performer look so comfortable on stage in their clothing. I think a lot of times there is uh, pressure placed on women to wear clothing that uh, prioritizes beauty as opposed to comfort. And I think the sweet spot is really more self-expression and comfort. And then I think the beauty just happens organically because you're setting yourself up to be your best self, you know? The thing that excites me the most about women's rights is to see women living according to their most authentic selves, being in line with what matters to them. I think a lot of times we as women are subliminally taught from a young age to make our own comfort level in any sort of scenario a lower priority, and that's a huge problem. We don't feel strong enough to speak up when something makes us feel uncomfortable. Uh, and moreover, in our social media, we often feel that the only way we'll get the likes that we want is if the photo looks beautiful. 
but I would instead love to see girls posting photos, not only where they look amazing, I mean, anatomically, we are designed to be beautiful and attractive. That's the human body, you know? We have long hair and eyelashes and breasts, like, that's designed to be attractive. Of course we want to be attractive. But for there also to be this celebration of girls who are posting images of themselves, doing incredible things, moving the needle on the world, being their best self, cooking something that excites them, wearing shoes that make them feel amazing, playing the drums, innovating something, you know, building something with cables, some crazy stuff, you know, and sharing that. I think we would have moved the needle on gender equality when we live in a world where girls and women, no matter what age they are, no matter what walk of life they are, feel safe and free enough to just be their best self. Three, two, one, call it.